Yes, Roma wines taste better. Because only Roma selects from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Roma Wines present... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Robert Mitchum in Death at Live Oak. A suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, those better-tasting California wines enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. For friendly entertaining, for delightful dining. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Robert Mitchum in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! You know what death is? It's a simple surgical process whereby a man's name is cut off from his body. If a man's name is dead, the man is dead. Even though his breathing may be normal, his pulse beat regular and strong. My name is dead. So I've become a ghost, a very much alive ghost with hemoglobin in my bloodstream and thoughts in my brain. And yet, as a ghost, I am accused of a crime which I swear to you I did not commit. Going up. Name your floors, please. Uh, seven, Nine, please. Seven. 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 I just Name finished a rather please. harrowing day with my attorney, uh, and I wanted a few moments' relaxation please. at the Sky Room before driving home to Palo Alto. As I stood in the elevator, I was Four, conscious of someone staring at me a girl. Wearing an orchid which had been completely crushed against the shoulder of a mink coat. She was young, early 20s, I'd say, a sort of face which I find peculiarly attractive. Lean, tan. She stood perhaps three feet away from me in the elevator. Her eyes stared steadily into mine. I glanced away and looked back again. She was still staring at me. Then she stepped over close to me. Going up. What are you doing here? Uh, I beg your pardon. Why did you follow me? You know I didn't want to see you. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. 21st floor. Hmm. You're Rex Melville. No, my my name is Sutherland. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. You look exactly like... Oh, please, forgive me. Uh, This is uh, your floor, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Uh, Good night, Mr. Sutherland. Good night. Sky room, sir? Yeah, yes, the sky room. Thank you, sir. I'm a flyer, and I like to look down on the lights of cities from high places. Usually it makes me feel important and warm inside, but not on this night. I found myself looking down, computing how many miles an hour a human body would be falling by the time it hit the sidewalk. Then I noticed, leaning over the parapet, a few feet away from me, the girl from the elevator. Good evening. Oh. Oh. Good, good evening. It, it looks as if I am following you. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, it doesn't seem possible. What, the resemblance? Yes, it, it's almost perfect. You're a little taller, I think. No, my chin comes just below his shoulder, too. You're exactly the same height as Rex. And who is Rex? A friend. You uh, told me your name on the elevator. I've forgotten it. David Sutherland. I'm Diana Blake. Miss Blake? Yes. Oh, would you care for something to eat, Miss Blake? Yes, I would. We had a rare bit, I think, and we talked about the customary subjects with the expected flippancy. She was beautiful by every standard except the Flemish. There was a thrilling compactness about her. My mind floated through all sorts of conjectures. But Miss Blake bolted me back to reality. I lied to you. What? My name isn't Diana Blake. It's Mrs. Melville. Rex is not a friend. He's my husband. Oh, somewhat more than a friend. In this case, somewhat less. It's so incredible. 
so utterly incredible to sit across the table from someone who looks exactly like my husband and, and have a good time. Oh, uh, better leave. He might find us here. Of course. Philip? Yes, Monsieur Sutherland. Check, please. May I see you home? Oh, it's not necessary. I have a suite here in the hotel. Here is the check, sir. I'll sign it. May I borrow your pencil, Philip? Uh, I'm deeply what? sorry, Monsieur Sutherland. What? I've been asked to tell you that... Now, look, I've been signing checks at the Sky Room for five years. Yes, monsieur, but the accounting Please, department... Please, don't hate is... me if I pay it. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly allow... You will allow... find, David, that I am a woman of extremes. I've either a great deal or nothing. Right now, the only thing I have a great deal of is money. Philippe. Thank you, madam. Don't be angry, please. It's a small price for saving my life. Saving your... When you spoke to me out there on the parapet, I was getting ready to commit suicide. I saw her to the door of her hotel suite, kissed her, mentally, and bade her a formal good night. It's been pleasant meeting you, Mrs. Melville, etc. But inside, I knew what had happened to me. And by four in the morning, I knew I'd have to do something about it. Market, oh, 500. I'd like to speak with Mrs. Melville. One moment, please. I'm sorry, sir, there is no Mrs. Melville registered here. Oh, uh, oh, operator, how about a Miss Blake? Diana Blake? I'm ringing Miss Blake's apartment. Thank you. Hello? Forgive me for calling this late. David Sutherland. I wasn't asleep. I thought you'd call. I've got to see you. I know. As soon as possible. Let me see. It's 4.15. I'll meet you in the hotel lobby at 2. Better make it an hour from now. Oh, no. Not the lobby. There's a little coffee shop, Radnick's, around the corner on Post Street. I'll be there. 5.15. It was just growing light as I drove up the bay shore. Practically no traffic. I got to Radnick's in about, oh, 40 minutes. She was there waiting for me. We ordered coffee. Anything else? Eggs? Toast? No. I'm not hungry. Do you know what I want to talk with you about? I think I know. There are a few things we have to get clear. Are you married? Yes. The hotel has you registered as Miss Blake. I've been separated from Rex for three years. I met him in Buenos Aires. We were married. Didn't work. So I left him. No divorce? I hate scandal. Nobody knew I'd been married. It was foolish, but I came back here and became Diana Blake again. And he dropped out of your life? Until last week. Just showed up out of nowhere. It seems he suddenly needs money. And a wealthy wife's a handy thing to have. Can't you buy him off? It doesn't stop there. He, uh... He wants to live with me. I can't stand being in the same room with him. And he looks exactly like me. That's why I married him. He's very attractive. His appearance... Is... But... He's, he's not a human being. He... And you'd rather kill yourself than live with him? Yes. Now, listen to me. Raise your head. Listen to me. Yes? I'd rather die than go through what I have to do this week. You know the firm of Sutherland and Sons? The importers? I used to have a third interest in the company. But there have been some cagey stock manipulations by my dear cousins. I wound up with a safety deposit box full of waste paper. I may have to go through bankruptcy. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, look. We both considered suicide. That's no good. Oh. But what would happen if we both became... Husband... And why? Yes. What will happen to Rex? Rex is going to become the late David Sutherland. Oh, no. Now, look, I've thought it all out. I have some property up in the High Sierra, a summer house called Live Oak. The only way to get there is by air. The place has been advertised for sale. Now, suppose you told Rex you were interested in buying Live Oak. Could you ask him to fly up with me in my plane? Well, he likes to fly, but... He might be suspicious. You, make, you can make it sound logical. Tell him you want to try to make a go of your marriage. Live Oak seems to be an ideal place for a second honeymoon. Yes, I'll try. 
Does he have any friends in San Francisco? None that I know of. He's lived in Argentina for years. Oh, one thing, his voice. It's a little higher pitched than yours, and he speaks more precisely. I can get by. What accounts does he have here? Bank he accounts? doesn't have any. He's using traveler's checks and the money I've had to give him. Will he stay with you tonight? If I let him. Good. That'll give me a chance to go through his hotel room. Where's he staying? The Park Row. Room? I don't... Re- oh, oh, yes, uh, 518. 518. Now, tonight, Diana, you tell him about Live Oak. Say I'm a real estate broker and make some remark about the resemblance. Yeah, all right. Tell him that tomorrow night is the only time I can fly him up to the summer house. I'll meet him at the Palo Alto airport at 9 o'clock. In the evening? The air is uh, smoother at night. Can you land at Live Oak after dark? No, Diana. But Mr. Melville will never land anywhere alive. (laughs) 